Well, dear people, it's good to be back with you again as we continue talking about the uh, person of Jesus Christ, Christology. And we have covered one lesson now on a biblical confirmation uh, on the reality that Jesus was 100% divine in his, in his person, 100% of the divine nature uh, within him. And we've talked about that last time, and now we're continuing our scriptural support for this reality. Um, that Colossians 2 9, it, it says, For in him all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form. So within this person, this one person, we have the full human nature, and now we're looking at the full divine nature, and that's exactly what that means the fullness of deity, the full d- divine nature dwells. Uh, in Jesus Christ. And we're going to look at some of the texts that confirm these uh, divine attributes, uh, beginning with this idea, uh, the three big O's. We were going to look at his omnipotence, his omniscience, and his omnipresence from texts that support this. So first, let's look at the idea that Jesus is omnipotent, that he has all power. Well, in Matthew 28, 18, uh, At the Great Commission, the Lord Jesus says, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. That means that we have uh, in this economy of God, this person who is God, the Son, who's taken to himself a full human nature as the Son of David, as he exercises that divine kingship, he has all authority given to him by God the Father to exercise, and that is in heaven and on earth, that has to do with his omnipotence, all authority. Nothing is left out, no authority, no power is, has not been given to him by the Father to exercise as he fulfills uh, his role as the God-man accomplishing God's plan and purpose to exalt God through what he does. And Revelation 1.8, Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, uh, the Almighty. So Matthew 28, 18 confirms this, uh, as well as Revelation 22, 12 and 13. Uh, Jesus says, Behold, I am coming quickly. My reward is with me to render to every man according to what he has done. Then he says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Those are attributes and descriptions of God the Father in Revelation that he takes to himself, and that does imply that he has that omnipotent authority over creation as the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Um, in Matthew 8, 26 and 27, Jesus says to his disciples, he said to them, Why are you afraid, you men of little faith? Then he got up. Remember, he was on the ocean with them. There was a storm at sea, and they were terribly frightened. He got up, rebuked the winds and the sea, and it became perfectly calm. Only the Creator can do that with that kind of power. The men were amazed and said, What kind of a man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? And that's the question Matthew wanted his audience to answer. And this this is more than just the human descendant of David. He is that in his human nature, but he's more. And the, the question that is asked has to be answered with the reality that he is divine as well as human. He's the God-man who can control the winds and the sea with a word that has to do with him being that hands-on creator. Um, there are other passages showing his omnipotence, such as walking on water. Uh, Matthew 14, 25, uh, feeding of the 5,000 and the 4,000 in Matthew chapter 14 as well. Um, and Matthew 15 and many, many other passages where you see this divine nature being exercised through this one person, the Lord Jesus Christ, confirming this. He has supernatural knowledge. He has omniscience. Mark 2, 8, immediately Jesus, aware in his spirit that the scribes were reasoning a certain way in their minds uh, about who could forgive sins within themselves, he said to them, why are you reasoning about these things in your hearts? He knows what men are thinking 
Only that can only be the result of having the divine nature within his within the one person. Same thing in John 1, 47 through 48. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said, Behold, an Israelite, indeed, in whom there is no deceit. How would he know that unless he had divine omniscience? Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered, Before Philip called you when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. I saw you. Not only did he see him, but he knew him. That's only God's omniscience on display, being seen on display. Um, John 6, 24 and John 16, 32, more verses that talk about this. Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who it was who would betray him. He knows these things only God can know. Um, so, um, omniscience, omnipotence, and then omnipresence. Here we go. There are a few direct references to this characteristic. But there are a few important ones that are that are key for you to understand. Matthew eighteen twenty, Jesus says to the disciples, "For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst." How could that be, when he has a human body and he's localized in his human nature? Matthew twenty eight twenty, and lo, he says at the great commission. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. We know He is with us. He is with us. And that can only be a possibility if we have this um, omnipresent divine nature of God the Son in this one person. Okay? Um, Ephesians 1, 22 and 23, put all things in subjection under His feet. And gave him his head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all things, fills all in all. In this last phrase, fills all in all, it's saying that Christ is the one who fills all things. The church is the, the example of this, but he can't do that if he isn't om omnipresent people. So that's another confirmation um, that we have for this divine nature with regard to his um, um, omnipotence, his omniscience, and his omnipresence.